beautiful new Maria Edwards Center in Edwardstown in Longford. The center is located within one of the oldest schools in the country, having been built in 1840, just nine years after the introduction of the Education Act of 1831, which for the first time formalized a form of education in Ireland. Incidentally, the system was adopted for the introduction of similar systems in England, Scotland and Wales almost 40 years later. I'm here to meet with Matt Varl from the Heritage Committee and we're going to explore the role played by the Edgeworth family in this very important part of our national history. Now Matt, could you tell me who the Edwards were? The Edgeworths were granted lands here in Ireland in Mostrum in the late 16th century. And one of the most famous members of the family was Richard Lovell Edgeworth. He inherited the estate in 1782. And prior to that, he was acquainted with some of the most famous people, Erasmus Darwin, who was the grandfather of Charles Darwin, Joshua Wedgwood, uh, James Watt and uh, Humphrey Davery and these were all members of the Lunar Society of Birmingham and they met, they were intellectuals and literary people and they met and they were the foundations of the Industrial Revolution in England. Edgeworth came to Edgeworthstown in 1782. Uh, he had a famous daughter, Mariah the author and he was married four times and had 22 children. And could you tell me about his interest in education, early education in, in Ireland? Yeah, well Richard Lovell Edgeworth was, uh, he was a polymath. He was interested in everything. He was an engineer, he was an inventor, he was a politician, but one of his particular interests was education. He saw education as a route out of poverty for the Irish people. Uh, prior to the establishment of any sort of a formal education system, uh, there was an unplanned education system run by the Church of Ireland. And they saw it as an opportunity to convert uh, the Irish people into their beliefs. And so there was a mistrust between the Catholics and the Protestants in relation to education. There was also intransigence on the part of the government who, who obstructed any effort to formalise education in Ireland. In 1799, uh, a committee was formed to look into the establishment of uh, an education system in Ireland, a formal education system in Ireland, and Edgeworth was a member of that committee. It came basically to nothing, but his interest in education could be seen uh, from 1798 when he published two volumes of Practical Education. I have the book here, Practical Education, and it's very interesting to see some of the subjects that Edgeworth uh, had included uh, in his publication. It included grammar and classical literature, geography, arithmetic, geometry, mathematics, chemistry, chemistry, public and private education, memory and invention, taste and imagination, wit and judgment. These are all things uh, that he believed were important in the education of children. His publication, Practical Education, was published in many European languages and was criticised for one reason in particular and that was that the curriculum didn't include religious instruction. And Edgeworth saw this not as the responsibility of teachers but as the responsibility of the respective churches, the Church of Ireland and the Catholic Church. He did make provision uh, within the curriculum uh, for uh, the inst religious instruction uh, but the responsibility was for the, the local curate or the local uh, vicar uh, to give this religious instruction not the teachers. Here we are now in the year 2020 
and this is something where they were trying to achieve. He was a member of Parliament. How did he use this time to uh, further his ideas? Okay. Yeah, he was a member of Parliament for Longford. Uh, he was, that was in 1799, and he prepared an education bill which was presented to the Parliament at that time. Uh, a, the bill included many of his ideas. One was that schools should be built. Two, that teachers should be trained. Uh, three, that the text should be the same text should be available in all schools. And four, that um, there should be an inspectorate. Here we are, something similar to what we have today. He also uh, recommended that there be proper salaries for teachers. Here, 200 years later, the same conversation is taking place. Edgeworth's bill unfortunately floundered because this was the time just following the revolution of 1798. It was also the time when the Irish government were immersed in the debating the Act of Union which came in in 1800. So the bill was lost in all of that uh, chaos at the time. But Edgeworth didn't give up. Uh, some years later the government established a commission on education. He was a member of that uh, commission. They met in Dublin. He, it is recorded that he travelled to every single meeting. He never missed a meeting. So you can imagine he was travelling 70, 80 miles from Edgerstown to Dublin uh, by pony and trap or, or carriage. So he was very dedicated to what he believed in. Again, education wasn't seen as, an important, as important by the government, even though Edgeworth uh, proposed it. It wasn't until uh, the Lord Lieutenant Stanley in Ireland uh, saw that there was a need for a proper education system and the Stanley letter to the British government goes down in history as being the catalyst for the Education Act which was passed in 1831. So we're here in the schoolhouse, which was built in 1840. Mariah Edgeworth was one of the trustees. Part of the requirements for the building of a school in that time was that there had to be two representatives in the, from the parish that were Protestant and two representatives of the parish from the Church of Ireland. And Mariah Edgeworth represented the Church of Ireland. And they had a number of schools around uh, this area. Yeah, be yeah, before the formal system was established in 1831, uh, education, Catholics were generally taught in hedge schools, as we know, uh, because there was the penal laws which forbid for the formal education of Catholics. Uh, Protestants were educated in charity schools. Edgeworth established the first interdenominational inter or can I say non-denominational school here in Edgerton. It was run by his son Lavel uh, from 1817 up until 1831 when the act came in. It was very su successful in, from an education sphere but was unsuccessful financially. He couldn't manage the financial end of it at all. It's some famous people were educated there, including uh, a very important person that again has been nearly written out of history, and that's James Brontier O'Brien, who came from Granard. Uh, the Edgeworth sponsored his education. He was educated here in Edgeworthstown, went on to Trinity College and then went on to England, uh, where he became a founding member of the Charteris movement, uh, which gave one man one vote uh, in England. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he got himself into a lot of trouble with uh, during Victorian times and ended up in jail and is buried in London. And he's a man uh, that we shouldn't forget. And he was educated by the Edgeworths here in Edgeworthstown. Uh, we're here in the wonderful new uh, Mariah Edwards Centre in Edgeworthstown. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about, uh, about the centre here? 
Yeah, well, the Edgeworth Society are responsible for this development. The Edgeworth Society go back to the 1960s and over that period they have been carrying out research into uh, the work of the Edgeworths, particularly in relation to in the field of education. Uh, the schoolhouse was gifted to the society by the Edgeworth family and in 2019 we were lucky enough that Falch Ireland uh, gave us a grant uh, to develop the centre. We now have uh, the Mariah Edgeworth Centre. It consists of um, an interpretation of the legacy of the Edgeworths and is told in seven languages. We also have a reproduction or a, a, what would you call it? Uh, we have recreated an old school of the late 19th century. It contains many valuable artefacts in relation to education. We have books going back to the 1800s, school books going back to the 1800s. We have the old slates, we have the old pens and nibs, uh, the inkwells and uh, everything. We tell the whole story of education. We would, have, we would believe that the Edgeworths were written out of that story. The story seems to be told from 1831 uh, up until the present day when people talk about education in this country. Uh, from 1771 to 1831, that period, uh, the Edgeworths were foremost in pushing for a uh, an education system and that whole story is told here in Ederson in this wonderful centre. Uh, so this centre, is it uh, open to the general public now and had it a book? Or? Yeah, well uh, with the COVID-19 now we have restricted our hours but uh, the centre is open from 10 o'clock until 4 o'clock uh, Monday to Friday. It's advisable to book but we do welcome walk-in visitors. And it's, can you be found online? Yes, we have a, a, a site at the moment, edgeworthstown.net and we're working on a new website, fabulous new website, which will be the mariahedgeworthcentre.net. Well, thank you very much indeed, Matt. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.